Hawaii fighter Ian De La Cuesta faced Spike 22's Ricky Camp at 135 pounds. Camp looked good early in the fight using his boxing background to keep the distance and pick his shots. Ricky showed good takedown defense and caught De La Cuesta with a head kick towards the end of the first round. The Hawaii fighter weathered the storm and came out in the second round scoring on a big takedown. Ian De La Cuesta was able to work the ground and get the second round submission win. Japan fighter Koshi Matsumoto was victorious against Underworld Extreme Guahan Top Team's Tyrone Jones in the 155-pound division. Jones slipped on a wet spot on the mat and was never able to regain himself as Matsumoto jumped all over him. Koshi Matsumoto quickly went for the back and earned the win via rear naked choke. 808 Fight Factory fighter Nate Thorell out of Hawaii took care of business against countershot fighter Robert Wistick in the third fight of the night. Thorell took Wistick to the ground and used his ground and pound to cut Robert over the eye and cheek. Nate Thorell used his reach to his advantage and kept Wistick on his back, landing shots from his guard. After three rounds, Nate Thorell was awarded the unanimous decision win. In one of the best fights in recent PXC events, Hawaii's Toby Misech and Korea fighter Cho Sung Wan put the crowd on their feet in what looked to be a kickboxing match for three rounds. Both fighters exchanged power shots on one another with no effect. Misech kept pressing forward with big shots as Cho Sung Wan took them with a smile. After picking the Korean fighter apart with shots up top and to the body, Toby Misech landed a leg kick to the body that dropped Wan and then finished him off with shots to the head for the referee stoppage win. Japan's Michinori Tanaka made a statement for himself at 135 pounds with a dominant performance against Rain MMA fighter Caleb Valatin. Tanaka was the aggressor early in the fight, stalking Valatin all over the cage. Michinori was the stronger of the two, taking the fight to Caleb. Tanaka finished the fight in the first round by a seated triangle, showing the crowd that he wants a shot at the 135-pound PXC belt. Former PXC heavyweight champion Roki Martinez was successful in his return to the cage against Saipan contender Milo Lassiter. The two wrestlers counted each other with great takedown defense and good movement on the ground. After the first round, the fight looked to be even as both fighters had their fair share of strikes landed. Martinez was a little bit busier in the second round, proving to have the better hands, while Lassiter showed power in the clinch. After three hard-fought rounds, the former champ, Roki Martinez, was awarded the unanimous decision win. Josh Calvo, representing Spike 22 in combat sports and fitness out of Washington, made his homecoming fight a success. Calvo made good use of his jiu-jitsu against 808 Fight Factory's Jonathan Visanti. Josh dominated the fight once it went to the ground, landing several staples that cut Visante open. Josh stayed in control and kept the pressure on his opponent, eventually working his way to Visante's back for the rear naked choke. In one of the featured fights of the night, Hawaii's Kaylin Curran and California's Kayana Rain made history for the PXC in the first ever women's fight. Both fighters came out looking to land from up top. Kaylin Curran had more success when they kept the fight on their feet, landing punches that took its toll as the fight went on. Kayana Rain had several submission opportunities, but just couldn't seal the deal as Curran fought through each attempt. In the end, Kaylin Curran held on for the unanimous decision win. The main event fight of PXC 36 was a rematch between Spike 22's Kyle Uggen and Trevin Jones out of Underworld Extreme Guahan Top Team. Jones took the last meeting by decision, but this time around had a hard time cutting weight. Uggen, on the other hand, said this was his best weight cut for a fight. Kyle Uggen was clearly the fresher fighter, using his wrestling to keep Jones against the cage. Trevin Jones wasn't able to find his range against Kyle having to resort for the shoot. Kyle controlled the fight as it went into the third and final round, up 2-0. to zero. In the third round, Jones was able to get the takedown and work from Uggen's guard. It was a little too late as Kyle Uggen controlled the fight when it went to the ground, racking up enough points for the unanimous decision win. 